Item. Ward of Zephyr. Living? Yes. Height? 191 cm. Weight? 57 kg. Defining characteristics. Teal eyes. Caucasian. Pale light blue skin tone. Brown hair. Physical evaluation. Requires 5 liters of fluid for hydration daily. Sensitive to changes in temperature and humidity. Potential current hazards. None. Fully docile, compliant, and indoctrinated. Observe safety measures according to induced weather. Location: Base 12-1. Reported anomaly: Meteorokinesis. Self transformation. Usage: Subject is trained as a Class 3 Special Technician in the Teal Division. Specialized in base disruption and support. He is particularly efficient with causing hazardous weather conditions to manifest over enemy terrain. Forcing the will of the sky serves as a massive boon towards turning the tides of battlefield for the insurgency, sometimes literally. The Ward of Zephyr is often sent early as part of the advance team to harass hostile operations, especially when aircraft and early detection systems are critical to their defense. For example, their communications may be sabotaged moments before our forces attack. Flying aircraft can be brought down by ice and frost accumulating on the wings and tail. Armored divisions and even entire supply lines are often stopped in their tracks due to heavy rain, mud, and landslides. Enemy commanders unfamiliar with the subject's ability have previously made the decision of deploying sensitive equipment such as the Helsinki Bayon Sky Array while the ward was in active duty. Subject is also invaluable to the neutralization of enemy harbors and coastal defenses, bringing colossal waves over shipyards and naval vessels. Subject must be provided a standard wet environment suit during missions. Apart from tactical disruption, the subject is a support asset for his fellow operatives. His most striking ability is converting himself into a cumulus cloud formation, in a process transfiguring his body into water vapor. <laughs> it is unknown how he is able to retain sapience or return to his original form. He has used his ability primarily for stealth, covering low-speed flyers. Example, Amerigo Zeppelin III. Enemy sensors appear to be unable to track any flying vessels inside the subject's cloud form. With some exertion, he is able to cover for faster aircraft, such as paratrooper planes, in order to better conceal insertions into enemy areas. Subject is also available for surveillance missions, as his cloud form cannot be distinguished from regular clouds. However, being in this form is shown to be incredibly taxing and being so for more than one hour causes physical pain and a temporary loss of abilities. Below is a chart noting the different ranges of his weather manipulation. These limits were tested in both controlled and field environments. The mean value of each test was used in certain cases. This chart should serve as nothing more than a list of observations. It is apparent that the subject can perform above what reports indicate. Factor Limit Wind Speed 5 to 45 km per hour Wind direction, all directions. Humidity, plus minus 28.7% of baseline relative humidity. Air temperature, plus minus 6.7 degrees Celsius of baseline air temperature. Air pressure, plus minus 30 kPa of baseline atmospheric pressure. Tested at surface level, plus 0.76 kPa increase every 100 meters. Cloud control area. Cloud formation within lesser than or equal to 500 meters. Can affect regions of larger clouds within its reach. May dismantle storms in the lesser formations. Cloud control capacity. Lesser than or equal to 2500 kg. Rainfall speed. From total stoppage, droplets remain in air, to 30 km per hour. Precipitation type. Rain, hail, snow, sleet, fog. Subject is to be protected by his own support team, a ten-man squadron from Barsky-12 Support Foray. His well-being is under the responsibility of Base-12-1's director. Report. Subject is a human being capable of limited control of mesoscalar weather patterns, most notably air pressure, wind movement, and rain. He can affect wind speed, wind direction, humidity, and air temperature. Water vapor, ice, and other particles associated with weather may also be manipulated by the item to create cloud formations. By extension, he is able to control any form of precipitation and events triggered by weather such as droughts and landslides, although his limitations make proper uses unlikely. To clarify, 
Subject is easily capable of controlling cumulus clouds, but not thunderstorms. He may dictate the type of precipitation, but not control rainwater or water in general. Likewise, he may only control dust particles to create nuclei for rain, not create dust storms. Subject is capable of short duration flight, using the wind to lift him across difficult terrain and through non-navigable barriers. However, this mode of travel is known to be unwieldy, and subject has often been confused with controlling his descent. The extent of his ability is also limited to whatever is in his vicinity. It is possible to expand the subject's reach by artificially introducing weather, such as cloud seeding, to his position. This technique was exploited during the Prince Kander skirmish, a naval battle where hostile vessels outnumbered an insurgency scouting outpost. The ward proposed a plan to delay the advance as reinforcements were then one hour out. The plan led to the observatory's planes beginning cloud seeding flights which near instantly amalgamated into a thick fog around the enemy presence, obscuring visibility on sea and air. The attack was stalled long enough for the Bracken 88 Sea Strike foray to arrive. History. Subject Zephyr 37 is the offspring result of Agent Zephyr 1, the original bearer of the subject's current codename, and a disciple of the Mirlucht Convent. The original agent has not been informed of the success of his 37th attempt in passing down his abilities before his death. Despite his theory that producing offspring with a mere left disciple may imbue the infant with far stronger powers than his own, Agent Zephyr was markedly more powerful in weather control than the ward. He was able to fully control thunderstorms up to 2.5 km wide, incite lightning strikes, produce gale force winds and torrential rain, and cause tsunamis. He was especially fond of submerging vessels, eventually referred to by seasoned enemy captains as the Doldrums. However, he required a specialized intravenous diet to properly carry out said functions, and sometimes operated at a level on par with the ward today. In addition, Agent Zephyr was unable to transform into a cloud formation, notably unlike the ward. At its absolute highest capacity, Agent Zephyr was capable of controlling hurricanes, able to redirect the incoming Category 4 storm from endangering the American fleet en route to Europe. Subject Zephyr 37 remains unaware of the agent and his connection to Zephyr 1, whose code name was retired in his later years. Along with the rest of Teal operatives, his intelligence consumption is to be strictly limited to mission required components and dossiers. In compliance with Command Law 8C, Information Quarantine Special Assets, operatives must observe Zephyr's perusal of the database. Any breach of access is to be reprimanded.